Hey guys, this is Mitz. So your long wait's finally over, you've got your Onefinity, and you have it all assembled. Where do you go from here? In today's video, we're going to cover some of those preliminary steps and help you familiarize yourself with your machine. So let's get started. So when you first turn your machine on, the very first thing that you're going to see is this screen here where it asks you to home your machine. Every time you turn your machine on, you should home it. And that's what we're going to do right now. Okay, so now the machine is homed, and you can see that um, because everything is under the state shows as being homed. Don't worry about the uh, Z um, under the toolpath column. We'll get to that in a minute. So the purpose of homing your machine is to define a reference point, which is the front left corner. The machine knows that from that point, it can move 32 and an eighth inch to the right and 32 and an eighth inch to the rear of the machine. If you don't home your machine, and let's say it started somewhere else um, on your table, when you would go over to the right or to the back and you hit the limit of the machine, it'll want to keep going because from that reference point, it's still thinking it's got 32 and an eighth inch in either direction. And when it hits the end of the rail, you're going to hear the grinding noise that uh, if you haven't experienced it, uh, I'm sure you might at some point. So I restarted my machine and... Um, made sure that the router was someplace other than the home position. And here's what will happen if um, you don't home your machine and it's going to go to the end of the rail. So you definitely want to make sure that you home your machine so that it knows where the soft limits are so that it doesn't continue to try and run off the rails. So if you ever get into a situation where you've canceled the home uh, sequence from the main screen or from the opening screen, you can always hit this uh, home button up at the very top uh, and that should take you back uh, through the homing sequence back to the front left corner. Okay, so now if I were to try and move across to the far right. It knows that it's uh, traveling from that uh, reference point 32 and an eighth before it gets to the end of its uh, soft limits. Okay, so I can go forward and back because I haven't got to that soft limit, but it's not moving any further to the right as I try. If I move all the way forward, it's going to hit the soft limits on the front side and it stops. So just to recap, homing is basically setting a reference for the machine to know where the soft limits are and once the machine is home, this reference point in the front left corner will um, define the soft limits which are pre-programmed into the Onefinity to say, hey, don't go any further than the 32 and an eighth in either direction. So after you've completed the homing sequence, um, go ahead and load a file uh, either through your Wi-Fi or USB stick and um, hit the open file button and then select whichever uh, toolpath you want to run. I'm going to, oh, let's do this one here, and then you click open. Okay, and what will happen is you should, um, for larger files, you're gonna get uh, this processing new file. And basically what it's doing, it's checking the G code to ensure that it's within the cutting boundaries. It'll generate the 3D view if you're uh, hooked up with uh, Wi-Fi or have Cam Master on. 
And uh, once the simulation completes, um, if everything looks good, you'll be ready to carve. The other part that I want to go over is um, setting zero on your workpiece. Sometimes people confuse homing and zero, uh, zeroing your machine as being one and the same, and they're not. One defines the cutting area of your machine. The other one defines the tool paths that are set for your program. So let's go ahead and set our zero block in, our touch probe, and we'll move the router Okay, you want to get fairly close with your bit. It helps you align a little bit easier. And oops, it helps you. I don't have this uh, um, locked down. I'm just using this for demonstration only, but uh, just to give you an idea. All right, a couple of things. Don't forget to put your magnet on your collet. And uh, once you've done that, you want to touch the touch probe to your bit. And when you do so, look at your screen and you'll see the X, Y, Z probe and probe Z um, highlighted in green. And that tells you you have connectivity. So once we've got that over top of the little circle in the right back corner, we can go ahead and hit probe XYZ. I have a quarter inch diameter bit set in there so we'll go ahead and hit set and it's going to come down and it's going to probe for zero first it'll probe for X next and then it'll probe for Y. Okay, a couple of things. Keep your hands away from there so that you don't get bit. And make sure to remove your probe and your magnet from the collet so that you don't have it go flying when you turn your router on. So the purpose of zeroing, it creates the reference of your workpiece based on what you've plugged in for your toolpath. And um, Onefinity will go through a sequence of reading your toolpath and comparing that to where you've got your reference point to make sure that A, you know, nothing is sitting outside of the cutting area. And um, if you do have it sitting outside of the cutting area, then you're gonna get the error message. So coming back here, remember earlier under the toolpath, the Z uh, was um, showing over. Well, now that we've zeroed the uh, X, Y, and Z, everything looks good, including the Z. So now everything is ready. In order to start your carve, um, keep in mind, I don't, I'm not going to carve anything today, but uh, uh, because I don't have my uh, project board uh, locked down, but you would come back and hit your play button. What that will do is it'll bring up a message making sure that you have your router turned on and it's up to speed. Um, I typically will turn my router on before I hit the play button. And then once it's um, um, ready to go, then I will uh, say okay. All right, so let's say the uh, first uh, tool path has been cut and I want to move on uh, to do another uh, toolpath with perhaps a different bit. So I'm going to come back here, open up uh, my file again, and pick um, another uh, toolpath to open up. And uh, I know that this one's got a different bit in here. So I'll go through, I'll change the bit, and um, uh, what I still need to do is to now zero my Z, so I'll uh, go ahead and put my probe on here and I'll lay it upside down, move the 
router so that it's somewhere in the middle of that cutting area or the cutout area rather and I'm gonna bring it down a little bit closer okay check to make sure that uh, my probe lights come on and they do all right so now I can probe for Z and it will start up right away Okay, so it didn't go back to its home um, X, Y coordinate, which is over here in the bottom left corner. Um, however, when you go to start this program, it would automatically move there. But if you choose to move it there manually on your own, this button right in the middle of the jog buttons uh, is what you would press. And it would ask you, do you want to move to your X, Y origin? I'm going to hit confirm and it bops it over there so now it's ready to go I've got a different bit in there now and I'm ready to run this toolpath I would just go ahead and come back and hit my play button and uh, it'll ask you again is your um, router turned on and up to speed you would hit OK and away you go just a couple more things I wanted to go over uh, if you hit the fly out menu you can actually uh, get to the screen here if you need to make some adjustments to your Onefinity. So let's cover those uh, quickly. Your control is your main screen. You've got settings, uh, so you can set uh, your units, your probe dimensions, um, and then uh, there's G-code. Um, I don't play around with the G-code at all. I just leave it as it is. Um, but uh, the probe, if you need to make any kind of adjustments or fine-tune your probe, this is where you would do it. Uh, under motors, you've got your different motors. Uh, so X is motor 0, Y is uh, motor 1, the um, slave drive is Y2, and then you've got motor 3, which is your Z. So, uh, touch on real quick here. Um, if you need to make some changes uh, to either your jerk or your max velocity, now keep in mind I've got mine set to inches. So let's go back and just change this uh, to um, metric because that's where most of the uh, updates uh, are done in the metric side. So I'm going to save that. Let's go back to motor zero. Okay, so um, recently you probably saw where um, because of some issues, uh, Onefinity recommended changing your max velocity from 12 and a half down to 10. So this is where you would do it. And then max jerk, I believe is normally set at a thousand. I've got mine set at 10,000. Um, I think, uh, when 1.0.1.0.6 came out, uh, max jerk was set at, uh, 15,000. Um, but then there were some issues with, um, uh, Z being off when you probe for XYZ, so it was dropped back down uh, to uh, a thousand. I've up mine to ten thousand, and I know that uh, with mine I can probe XYZ and then immediately afterwards come back in and probe Z uh, separately uh, so that uh, everything will be right on. So that's where you would uh, uh, do some of the changes if uh, need be. Um, then you get into uh, under admin uh, for general. So if there's any kind of firmware upgrades, this is where you would do it. Uh, you upgrade via file or upgrade via web. Uh, always remember to reset your configuration so that uh, everything takes. If you have anything changed in your configuration, make sure to write them down so that you can um, you know, re-enter them uh, appropriately. But uh, this is where you would do it. And if you're connecting to the network, um, this is the screen uh, that you would go to is the network screen uh, and then plug in all of your um, Wi-Fi information here. So hopefully uh, this will kind of give you a, a, a brief uh, um, intro to uh, getting started uh, with your Onefinity. Hope you guys have a great day.